Well, welcome to the GE Spotlight interview. My special guest today is Ingo Wurgitzer. Ingo, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we can talk about both your role at Airbus and also your position as a board member of Apex. But let's start with Airbus. What's your title and what is your responsibility there? Hi, Steve. Um, my title is Vice President Cabin Marketing. Mm -hmm. And actually, responsibility is quite um, um, customer-centric. So we start with consumer research, do all the research activities, uh, finding out the customer needs, mm -hmm. but then also driving innovation together with customers to deliver in the end the best cabin. And that's why we also guide the customer into our mock-up center in Toulouse, as well as at Expos. So the full value chain, um, it's more than what you call usually marketing, I would yeah. say. How do you go about assessing uh, what passengers are expecting, what they want from air travel uh, with Airbus? We have different tools how to do so. So we do consumer research. Mm -hmm. um, we we um, ask passengers. Um, we test um, um, certain ideas with them. Um, but also, of course, we also collaborate with our customers, the airlines, and, and finding out what their preferences are. Because um, you know, in terms of comfort and efficiency, there might be very different needs. And so we need to find the best way um, for, for a very efficient, productive solution in the end. That How serves both. That serves both. Okay. How do you go about selecting your guinea pigs, your passengers who are going to come along and sit in a cabin mock-up? Do you pick them at random, or are they experienced travelers? Usually, they are experienced travelers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the product you are testing. Mm -hmm. So you request always, you know, at least they have done three or four flights uh, in the last year, so they can comment on long range or short range and whatever your purposes and be able to talk about. So it's a very specific selection of passengers. And what sort of reaction do you get from them when you invite them into your, your mock-up? Are they quite interested in what you're doing? Actually, people are all very, very you know, curious about flying. So that's always okay. still a dream of most of the people. Not everybody um, like you, be maybe fly a lot for business. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they love flying, and that's why they're always interested in how to improve that, and, and, and they're very happy and open to give feedback. Yeah, even travelers, frequent travelers, mm -hmm. you know, they, they love to give feedback to make their journey even better. Now, what for you have been the most important developments in the cabin interiors over the past few years? For me personally, to be honest, um, I have to say A350 cabin, um, that was a big project I've been working on mm -hmm. um, last um, couple of years. Um, that means um, we really ask the, the passengers, the airlines, understand their needs and, and have a very focused solution um, in terms of innovation and delivering that on time. Mm -hmm. For me, that was a really, really good experience. Um, of course, we also focus on a lot of efficiency enablers. You know, so there's always a cost pressure and we need to make sure that we deliver our service and experience also in a very efficient way. So there have been up a lot of new cabin efficiency enablers and that is about minimizing the space for monuments but free up space for the cabin for the comfort and service of the passengers. So can you give me some specific examples of improvements on the A350? That if I was flying an A350 tomorrow, what would, what would I actually see? What you see and maybe what you feel. Mm -hmm. Because it's also about the, the, the experience about what you feel. And one thing is uh, we have a flat floor. It's nothing, you know, would say, wow, fantastic, because that's normal. You yeah. always have flat floors. Yeah, exactly, but not in an aircraft. Uh, so okay. you have rails for seat rails, and usually that's not flat. And usually between the seat legs, you have these big boxes where you actually want to put your feet. Mm -hmm. So in that, um, I think we really cleaned up. It's a very flat floor, no hurdles, and no boxes where your um, legs okay. live. So that, that is a real improvement. Of course, in terms of visually, we, we really introduced a new design language, very horizontal lines, um, big, um, I would say, icons like the dome in the center. And all this is improving the spaciousness. And, you know, comfort is also about perception. That means um, we have to use the design tools and light. And we have um, LED lighting as standard in that aircraft that really gives you the perception um, of comfort in, in the interior. But it's not just visual, is it? Do you also take into account touch and feel? Absolutely. Yeah, so touch points, um, we, we analyzed. You know, it's usually um, BIN, it's IFE, uh, it's a lavatory, all mm -hmm. those things. Um, make lavatories more hygienic and, and get a better quality feel of those things you, you use in the aircraft. Mm. 
Are airlines generally getting more demanding in what they expect from a brand new aircraft? Of course, I think that is a continuous um, incremental innovation. Always had to get a new aircraft, you want something better. Mm -hmm. And that's quite normal and that also drives us. So every new launch, like we did now for the, seven, uh, for the 242 ton um, version of the A330CO, we introduced new elements um, that made a better experience now for SIS that have been launching customer in Europe. Um, so even little details, you know, make, could make a difference. How do you balance off the, the need for an airline wanting to customize an interior to make it, make it their own and your need as Airbus to standardize a product for efficiency in manufacturing? It's efficiency in manufacturing, but it's also to deliver on time and to deliver on quality. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we spend upfront time to find out what is the need and what sh should be in the catalog to make sure that we have the right interesting, inspiring topics listed and product elements. So um, if you have the catalog right, make sure you have the right customers in there. They deliver on time and, 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 and in performance. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of elements that you want to ensure that the, well, the customer is happy in the end. Yeah, it's timing, it's cost, but it's also the quality and performance of the product and the overall experience in the cabin, of course. Now, if I was a new supplier in this industry, I would yep. love to be in your catalog. That would be my goal. How do I get into your catalog? How long does it take? What does it cost? How do you go about it? First of all, I think our target is as well to offer choice because we see the need clearly that certain customers have specific market needs they want to address. So they have individual products and that's what we want to deliver. So the more choice we can offer in the catalog, either in a platform approach, mm -hmm. the standard elements that you com combine in a different way, or with more suppliers for the same topics. Um, so we have four IP suppliers, five connectivity suppliers, and you can mix and match as you want. Mm -hmm. And that is also a matter of choice for the customer um, uh, for their market needs. So uh, how do we do that? Um, we need to enable those suppliers um, to be interchangeable, they, they, they can exchange the information. So first of all, you need to ensure, uh, we need to ensure that you have the right quality and performance uh, to deliver to our customer um, um, satisfaction uh, and, and also in terms of industrial um, value, uh, value chain delivery. So um, we need to check that and need to prove um, that um, you're performing. Then um, we need to check also, uh, is that a competitive um, service? Is that needed with our customers? If all that is done, um, I think it takes between nine months up to two years mm -hmm. um, to get into the catalog. It depends if you're a known supplier, a certified supplier in the Airbus system already, mm -hmm. um, or also in terms of technology, um, is there a lot of change needed in the interface with the aircraft or not? And so it's not a certain time um, or cost that you can say th this is what it costs. No, it's about um, really the, the, the product itself and the supplier if you know them or not. Let's turn now to your work with the board of Apex. You've been on the board previously, you've been re-elected for 2016. Mm. Um, what have you been working on up to now? What's been your area of speciality? Actually, I was focusing a lot on marketing and communication. Um, mm -hmm. That's by what I'm used to do in the normal life as well. So Good. that's a great synergy. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think for me, that was really important to, to make, uh, a, we call it a um, consumer-centric approach, make it transparent to, everything, to everybody, um, not only external people, also internal, because we are member-centric organization. Mm -hmm. We need to share that information. And um, we sh should be led, I would say, bottom up. So we need to hear the voice of our members and then um, drive the organization in the right direction. So how have you put that into practice? What have you actually done over the past year? And what, do you, what are you planning to do for 2016? Oh, we have done quite a lot, to be honest. Um, so um, for instance, we changed um, the whole uh, design language in terms of um, how we communicate for the magazine, um, for the website, and we added um, the daily um, um, news as well as um, 
NAP recently. Mm -hmm. So um, that we use all channels in the same style, so that it's easy to connect um, each other and interface between the different channels we use to make it as transparent to everybody. And we also added in the web website, for instance, um, opinion polls. So we address questions where you can answer and we get your feedback and incorporate that in our uh, um, um, work. Um, as well, um, for instance, board meetings. We try to get them very transparent. So everybody's allowed to join, but usually we are sitting there on the weekends, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and spending that time um, between us. But we need to communicate what we are talking about, what are the topics we, we discuss. Um, so we have um, a regular communication news about that in the magazine, for instance. The second thing is we also need to get that transparency external, yeah, to, to learn um, those people who are not within Apex uh, that we are driving innovation yeah, and they need to be get aware of that, maybe to join us, um, also in other segments. Uh, because we have a great vision in Apex and we are not there yet and we, we need to, to drive that forward. So focusing specifically on 2016, what would you like to have achieved by this time next year? For me, um, we have to get the hub of passenger experience. The hub. The hub. Uh -huh. So every information communication, we should be the first source. If anybody wants to get information or pass passenger experience, he should go via Apex. Right. So and that's why we need to get very visible outside and um, have all information that is relevant for our community. You find it in our hub, which the main page which should be a website as, as a starting point. And then, of course, you link to different sources. Um, so that is, um, for me, a big target increase the visibility, get the hub of the information. Um, the second big topic for 2016 is about increasing the ambience and comfort um, sector. So we want to initiate a seat innovation competition in Singapore, mm -hmm. where we invite um, all little designers um, up to the big ones that we know established um, seating companies um, to really uh, drive a seat challenge and um, establish um, those guys um, also um, in our community. Because the passenger experience, you know, is in the seat. We have an in-seat video system. Um, so how to integrate, and this is unique for us as well, you know. It's not only about the content, it's also about the integration of that systems in the seat. And all together it delivers the experience. Ingo, it's been terrific talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us today on the G Spotlight. And uh, good luck for 2016. My Thank pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.